What's up, everybody? Sean here with another live live to roll video here. Uh, it's going to be, uh, we got a few guests today, but for right now, it is going to be Tom and I. Whoops. What's up, everybody? <laughs> uh, let me get this set up better for us because I'm uh, not doing a very good job right now. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're. Expecting to start with a couple guests, but we have uh, two more people coming on. Bobby, that you guys do know, um, will be on as well. And then uh, my friend Russell, who hasn't been on yet, will also be on as a guest to talk a little bit more about caregiving and stuff because he's a higher level quad and really requires a lot of care. So, um, yeah, so that's about it for now. We'll get started. Uh, I'll just do it. I'll introduce the topic real quick sorry guys a little unorganized here just got a little off to an awkward start but uh we are going to be doing talking about caregiving and independence and the balance between the two so trying to really get like a good line you know you don't want to have too much care and not do enough of your own self-care you don't want to overwork yourself and do too much for yourself where you're killing yourself and you know just to try to take care of yourself independently so it's all about finding that right balance so we're going to talk a little bit about that kind of stuff um, how to treat caregivers, how to find them, um, you know, what you can do to be more independent and just stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's just get started here. I'll just do the quick intro again, like normal. Um, we'll have everybody intro when they get on to, you guys know me, I'm Sean. I'm a C5, C6 quadriplegic from a snowboarding accident, um, 15 and a half years, 15 and a half years ago. So, or 16, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, this is my friend Tom. I'm Tom. What's up, everybody? Uh, in case you forgot last week or new this week, welcome. Um, I'm a C5, C6 quad as well. Um, I was injured 23 years ago uh, in an automobile accident. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, 27 right now, so I've been injured for most of my life uh, growing up. And uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Um, yeah, dude, so if we can get kind of right into it, um, I can, I'll just kind of go over like what I do for my care because I have, I think for a quadriplegic, probably pretty minimal care. Um, as far as like most stuff goes, you know, I really, the only time I have a caregiver come in usually is actually when I do my bowel care stuff. Uh, for the most part, I can do a lot of the other stuff myself. You know, I can get up on my own and get dressed and do a lot of that stuff, which was really hard to work up to and to, to you know, to, to get to that point but it was something I really wanted in the beginning and worked for. So for me, I pretty much just have a caregiver come on my bowel days, which I do every other day. And um, I have them come in for a few hours, basically just to help me get started, to help me, you know, while I'm in there with anything, uh, I have them flush my catheter, um, do my, um, you know, cleaning up everything, cleaning my leg bags and all that, helping me in and out of the shower that's the one transfer I can't do um, and then pretty much once I'm dressed and ready uh, they go and I'm on my own again you know for the till the next for the next like 48 hours so the next day uh, day after the next so um, you know that's just what I've sort of developed and kind of got into I know Tom you do your bowel care every day so yeah well, I have a daily caregiver um, the, I mean I I'll just start from the beginning, I guess, because I started off, I was injured as a kid. I was four years old when I was first hurt. So initially during, you know, the first few years of my injury, um, I, I mean, my parents provided pretty much all my care, like daily care, you know, like they fed me, they did everything for me. They pushed me around, you know, they did it all. Um, it was pretty quick that they put me back, like they put me into school. Um, you know, I was just a little while before I was supposed to start kindergarten before I, you know, when I got injured. So they put me back into school pretty quickly. And I was only, you know, I had a caregiver, not a caregiver, but an aide at school, to, you know, throughout the day with me. And that continued for, for the next like five or six years. Um, and my parents started to recognize the importance of me attaining my independence or, you know, like working towards some independence. Um, so that is kind of, I think, an important topic we can, you know, maybe like touch on for a minute is, you know, if you're newly injured and you are living at home, which very often, you know, if you weren't living at home before, sometimes you go back home or at the very least, 
family members will very often step up and you know be your caregivers initially they're the ones that the hospital will train and then they're tra- you know the family members can then train other caregivers if that's the route that you want to go now i was a kid it was very easy for me to you know just have my parents there take care of me my mom's a nurse so i was really lucky in that regard that she had a lot of medical you know skills already and you know her and my dad between them and my brother and sister, you know they'll take care of me for the, most of my adolescent life once i got into high school the idea of college and moving out and you know real independence hit me kind of like a brick wall and i yeah. was like um i've spent the last like 12 years like not really you know doing much for myself in the way of independence transferring and stuff never did independent transfers didn't catheterize myself you know didn't really do much of anything myself no dressing but then i don't know it really like dawned on me that if i wanted to move out and do like live my life like my friends were doing and like i wanted to i would need to attain these kind of minimum set of skills and I started to work on it. You know, I got that surgery with my augmentation that gave me a, you know, the stoma that I catheterized through, which, you right. know, made catheterizing, you know, independently much more possible, uh, much easier, which really was like a big step towards my independence. But then it was transferring, baby. Learning those transfers and building up those muscles. I swear the first time, like, I transferred to my bed independently from my chair, it took me like 45 minutes. And the whole time, my mom and dad were, like, sitting there, like, waiting to catch me or, like, trying to, like, you know, help me throughout. I'm just, like, leave me the heck alone. Like, i got to do this. But, you know, I kept trying. I kept working towards it. And, you know, like, it got easier. Now, I could transfer on my own and I could dress and undress myself independently. That was, like, what I needed to be able to do in order to, like, give myself the confidence to be able to, like, move out, be on my own. Right. The first year I did move out, I had to hire caregivers for the first time in my life, you know, that like we're family members. Uh, you know, I was 21 years old. I was like, all right, how the heck do I do this? Um, so I signed up for in-home supportive services uh, here in California. That's a program run by the state that provides um, caregiving uh, only for caregivers if you are disabled criteria you know someone comes out and assesses you and you are given you know assigned a certain number of hours uh, that you can hire and you know get paid for by the state for caregiving so i was so actually going to try to look into that for other states but i, I didn't get enough research done to so see if there was if you are i have looked into it for other states i've spoken to other people every state has a program like this um okay. they're all individually state ran they're all slightly different in their own way some are better than others. The one here in California is pretty top tier um, in terms of, you know, like what they'll provide for you. Um, it, but it does vary state by state. Google, 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 Google. Yeah. Um, is your just look and it up. Have, I'll also, you know, just look at spinal cord injury resources in your area and they'll be able to lead you um, to, you know, whatever that program is in your state. Now, the... You know, supportive services is kind of designed for your family members, you know, to if they have to stop working in order to, you know, support you care-wise. Um, that was the initial idea for the program was to support family members in that regard. So maybe you could still get some form of income, you know, maybe having to you know, not work, you know, in order to care for that family member individual. But you can't hire anybody. Um, once they, you know, the background check and, you know, go through like a six hour training class or whatever, um, then you can hire them on as IHSS. Now, the way that I do my care now is I have a IHSS caregiver, so the gentleman I found, he works for other home health agencies, but does IHSS stuff for me. Um, he comes five days a week, Tuesday through um, Saturday, or uh, no, Wednesday through Sunday. And then on Monday and Tuesday, because I can't put someone in a position of working like seven days a week, but yeah, I do require daily care. So the way that I offset that is I have a home health agency provide my care for the additional two days a week on Monday and Tuesday. Um, that is paid for by my insurance. Uh, Medi-Cal, Medicare does provide a certain number of agency care, um, but it can be limited in the number of days. 
mine I got approved for those two days a week um, nice. throughout the year. Um, but it does vary, so that is different for everyone. You should just have to get the right doctor to you know use the right verbiage to you know convince your insurance company whatever it is um, to just understand that you're chronically disabled and you require regular daily care. It's not like after a hundred days they can assess you and see how you're doing. You know, like it's gonna be the need. Right, and that's the other thing too. Um, and then, right. no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, for most like for IHSS here, you have to qualify for you know Medi-Cal, Medicare. I'm sure that's the same in all things or whatever. But the thing is, just don't give up on those. Like sometimes they will deny you initially. Like that's the way all these yeah. programs work. You have to fight for your your advocacy. Like to get those couple days, they probably just didn't give it to you right away. You know, you have to. Co uh, try a couple times. You have to email. You have to call. You have to like. It can be. You have to. It can be one of the most difficult sometimes. things to so. advocate for yourself, especially when you're recovering right. from something, you know, like a serious injury, like you know, leaves you paralyzed, whatever it may be. Even you know, everyday life. You don't know, have the time or the energy to spend four or five hours on the phone. You know, like you know, right. every day for a week advocating for yourself. Like it's just such a pain in the ass. Uh, when you know, you know, you deserve the care. You have the right to the care. But in any event, there are programs, there are people, there are, you know, social programs and stuff to help um, advocate on your behalf. Um, it, yeah. it is a battle, but it's one worth fighting. You know, exactly. means, uh, you know attaining the quality of life that everyone deserves. Right. Yeah, I and mean, if you're... And that means showering, that means doing bowel care, that means, you know, regular assistance, you know, where it's required. Right. Yeah, no, dude, that's definitely uh, super important to make sure you have the right care. That's one of the things I want to talk about here, you know, is like just making sure you have enough care. Um, and then, like, I also want to touch back on uh, you were talking about, like, the family and stuff in the beginning and having your family help you and everybody contributing. And that's usually really helpful. And that's what most a lot, you know, a lot of families end up doing. But it can be super stressful on a family initially, especially those first year or two when you're really struggling. Um, an attitude can come into play on stuff like that. I noticed, you know, like, you know, you get short and stuff with, and it's like, you're not actually mad. It's just like the situation. And it's just something to be mindful of if you are in that situation right now. But if you're sometimes going through. you are actually mad. And then yeah, you sometimes have to you rely on this person to provide your care, you know? Right. And it's, it's where maybe they don't want to be around you at that moment. You don't want to be around them. And that can be difficult. Yeah. Exactly. So that's another thing is really like treating the way you treat your caregiver, um, family or otherwise, you know, hired or not. You have to have a good communication and get a uh, good understanding with, with it's whoever so funny is. you say that. My mom, I am the luckiest person in the world because my mom is the greatest mom in the whole wide world. I love her to death, to the end of the earth and back. Um, but sometimes, I mean, she was my primary caregiver for most of my adolescent life right. um, and into my adult life even sometimes now you know when I go home she'll you know help me with my care um, and we had some times and you know when it would it would be really hard really difficult you know my dad was always there you know kind of step in and help out you know she was like I'm done with him you know like he's being too much right now and I mean I could be you know extra and too much and you know difficult and, I mean it can be really hard receiving care sometimes. Um, it, you know, it's hard. It can be hard on the caregiving side, but it can hard, be really, really hard on the receiving care side too. Right. You know, nobody, nobody can really hurt like you. You know, a family member can because you know how to. You know, you know how to go after a family member. You know, you know what to say. Um, yeah. And I, it's really important. I think sometimes to recognize that if it is hard, if it is difficult, if it's not working, that's okay doesn't mean that you know there's something wrong with either party you know but then hey like hey you may like you need to consider third party care maybe it's just not working out yeah i think honestly it can be it can be super stressful on relationships family or because i even you know i had for a period of time i had my girlfriend that i was living with as my active caregiver which seemed like a good idea and it worked okay for you know like a little bit but those stressful times, those hard days, those things, like it adds a lot of stress and factors in um, that might not otherwise have to be there. Um, and it's even with your family and stuff, you know, like my mom made a comment uh, that she's tied with your mom.
for number one. So, <laughs> yes, I think God, I, I think all 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 and like I think any quad mom that's stepping up to help is I mean it's 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 a lot you know it's it's hard it's yeah. it's for sure so like it's it's a big deal and it is helpful. Um, so mom, thank you, and all the other moms out there and dads and brothers, sisters, family members, you know everybody uh, that does help out. It, it's very helpful and beneficial. So. Um, yeah, just wanted to <laughs> uh, throw that out there. But yeah, so um, we were going on the family and stuff. Do you want to shoot? I don't know. Do you have anything else you wanted to mention on care? Or hi hire, um, uh, you know, that transition from family care to non-family care, that was like uh, one of the biggest changes in my life when I moved out. You know, like going from not having family around to like being on my own when I first moved out that first year I think I had I had a caregiver every morning and every night yeah even like to help you know make sure like supervise my transfers make sure I wouldn't fall like my parents are so deathly afraid that I would like fall over my transfers at night you know like eat it but that lasted all of about like eight eight months you know, like I made a couple homies in school and like they wanted to go out like at night and like I had to be home by eight o'clock for my caregiver. And I was like, nope, this is not gonna work. So I just like, I made a transition and it was baby steps. Like I gave myself like two nights a week where I would just be on my own and I would transfer, you know, on my own and like that'd be fine. Uh, now, and that went to, I don't have anybody in the evening now. I have. A woman who comes like three days a week to help me with laundry, you know, cleaning my floors, you know, like stuff like that. So, I mean, things I can do, but things that are just arduous and tedious and right. difficult to do. My wheelchair take too long. Um, she is also a HSS worker, um, caregiver, and, uh, you know, awesome, awesome lady. But she, you know, just comes pretty much at her convenience, you know, a couple days a week. Just help me with my cleaning stuff, you know, like around my apartment. It's difficult for me. Uh, you know, I just keep my little list of, you know, stuff for it. Honestly, it's kind of like, we like pass sometimes, like, we don't even see each other for a week, because she'll just like come in and do her thing, and like, I'll be out doing my thing. But that was, you know, something that became really important for me, was having my evenings, you know, not being bound to transfer by nine o'clock, because that's when my caregiver was there to supervise me, or assist me transferring. That was... That was kind of the like last big step to my freedom, you know, like my independence. Um, and you know, I'm very lucky and grateful that I was able to like work toward, like work to that. And, you know, I, I was worried for a long time that I wasn't gonna be able to. You know, I right. feel like it's uh, I think I a lot of people worry about that, especially you know, early on in their injury. It seems pretty daunting that first year or two when you're trying to figure out that independence and like trying to gain some of that back for yourself but it's it, it is daunting and it is hard it's a lot of work but if you put in the work you you can achieve the goals you know you can and oh my goodness like the <laughs> difficulty like the days when you wake up so sore and tired and like you gotta like you know still get up and transfer yourself yeah. when your arms are like completely shot you know like for a lot of the work it out me i know you play rugby and stuff but uh, even you know building up those muscles to get to the point where it's easier and comfortable to transfer more regularly you know it's not a it's not an easy transition you know it's like it's mm. it's a lot of work uh, and it can be really scary uh, you know learning how to balance and learning how to move your body um you know, like some of the videos on the literal channel that Sean's done on transferring and stuff like that is gold. I'm telling you, do not like just go past it. You know, like I mean, try things. You know, on your own, every injury is different. Everybody has different muscles and a different level of control. But these techniques and you know, like seeing someone do it, um, really is an incredible like asset, like um, really, really useful thing. Uh, I found, and even 23 years post injury, you know, sometimes like I still like look up how other quads do stuff, and I'm like, I try it out, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm like why have I been doing this? This pain, <laughs> struggling my whole entire life, you know? <laughs> uh, exactly, dude. and that's why I did initially start the channels because, you know, Mike DeYoung, my friend, showed me how to do the transfer that I do, um, 
and you know that that was kind of before there, there was YouTube and stuff but it was really before it was really like a thing that people were posting and sharing stuff like that so you know for me I, like we learn stuff like one-on-one -on -one by like mentor like friends and stuff and that's great but not everybody has the availability not everybody has a triant foundation and people that are going to support groups regularly and meeting with you and helping and stuff like that um so that's exactly why look the internet's a great source i like i mean not just my channel you know there's dozens of these quad channels and other yeah. disability channels that have awesome techniques and stuff to watch and you should definitely check or out go to, um, go to a local support group you know go support to support groups is the best like thing you can and do meet other quads meet other parents meet other people with similar you know injuries and you know just i mean sometimes i've been caught just like you know, watching Sean like transfer in his van. You know, like when we're getting ready to like go out and cruise, and like I always feel a little bit weird, like sitting there, like staring at you transfer. But like it's fascinating. You know, like also, you know, like inspiring, give me ideas. Like when you know I gonna make you know non traditional transfers to you know surfaces that aren't my bed and stuff. Like how to do it? You know how to like lean down, grab my knees, and you know, kick my head up, get my hip up, and move over. You know, like uh, it's it's funny, but it's cool. And, you know, you can't get that from anywhere else. Yeah, no, for sure, dude. It's that, exactly. It's the only thing you can do is really just learning from other people's experience and watching and stuff. So as far as independence goes, like, that's the best thing to do. And right now, support groups uh, might not be happening for a little bit because of everything with the COVID stuff. Um, I don't know when we're going to be able to get back into hospitals and, like, visit with patients and do all that. Um, all right. Triumph Foundation is hosting uh, virtual support groups every week. Yeah, so we are doing um, virtual support groups, and and actually, if anybody does want to be involved in one of those, like if you're a quad or a para and you you know need somebody to talk to, please you know email me and I can get you that information. Because that's the beauty of the internet, so please don't be shy if you're not local to our support yeah, groups. Yeah, uh, we've had a non-locals joining our groups, which is really cool. You know, we got guys from Seattle, just NorCal, San Diego that can't normally make the LA ones. So it's so cool. So you link the information uh, for the, at least the Triumph Foundation where they post the support group information. Yeah, if anybody does want to check out Triumph Foundation on their website, I think, are all the virtual groups on the website? Uh, I'm not, I'm not actually sure. Oh. On the website, and you will get emailed about every support group that happens if you sign up for the Triumph newsletter. Just, just give me your email. And it's not yeah. spam or anything. It's all really good. Oh, no, it's not. Sure. Yeah. Anything that Triumph emails out is about a support group, an activity, something. Like this Friday, we're actually having a webinar on stem cell research, and one of the leading doctors is going to be running it for us. Um, so like Triumph Foundation is a lot of amazing stuff and there are foundations like that all over the country you know like maybe not I don't know if anybody's quite like Triumph I think we're pretty like awesome <laughs> just because of the, how personal hands on everybody is in, in the foundation but there are foundations that can help you um, all over the country and hopefully the world I don't know as much internationally obviously you know if there's stuff but Hey, Tom, I'm so going to let gotta... you talk for a second and um, bring uh, Russell in. He just texts me. He's ready okay. to go. So, so you guys hang out awesome. with Tom for a sec. So getting back to the caregiving topic, um, apologies for segueing for a minute. I, know, I found like one of the most important aspects of caregiving is uh, finding, finding one you have, you know, good communication good relationship with it's a difficult relationship you know like caregiving is one of the diff most difficult jobs Whoa. in the world but um, it is i think you know important especially if you're interacting with these people five days a week or more um in order to you know be friendly with them um yeah. you know it's difficult it's difficult without you know having some kind of rapport, some kind of relationship. It's just, it's not going to work out long term or regularly. You know, if you can't be friends with this person, um, you know, as well, which can be a really difficult thing to find. But give us a second. I think we're trying to get Russ live with us. Yeah. I can do whatever, right. man. Whatever I can. Just trying to get 
video feed uh, going. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay. Sean should be back with us. Russell. What up? What up? Alright, we got the video, you guys. Alright, now everyone can hear me again. <laughs> Yo, what up? Uh, what up, Russ? We can hear you. Let me just add your video in. Boom! Now we got Russ. Alright, everybody, uh, just do a quick intro. This is my friend Russell Burke. He's the man. He's been injured about seven years now, right? You just had your anniversary, I think. Yeah. Um, I'll let you do a quick yeah. intro, too, but this guy is the man, dude. I met him pretty early after his injury, and uh, Russ is pretty awesome. So. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, if you want, Russell, go for it, and just you can give a quick, like, you know, 10, 20 second, just who you are, yeah. you know, and everything. Yeah, my name's Russell Burke. Uh, I got hurt in Lake Havasu, uh, May 26 of 2013. Dove off the back of a boat, hit the bottom of the river, broke my C4, C5 vertebrae, and uh, was paralyzed from the, from the neck down. So, uh, you know, when I first got hurt, like, I, you know, I think we all think uh, life's over. And, you know, after uh, coming home and being depressed for a few months, it was, it was, uh, that wasn't me, so I had to uh, I had to accept my injury and suck it up, you know, because I had to suck it up for suck it up for me and my kids, you know. I have uh, two awesome kids, a 17 year old son and a 16 year old daughter, you know. And ever since then, it's like uh, gung ho, full speed ahead, you know. Awesome, man. Yeah, dude, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Just so you guys know, like, Russell, like, if you do want to follow him on Instagram or anything, this dude is doing all kinds of cool stuff all the time. Like, he's out yeah, racing dude. racing motorcycles, like, I mean, in his power chair, head-to-head, -head, street racing. <laughs> right? <laughs> doing all kinds of fun stunts and stuff with his yeah, buddies. Tom. What up, Russ? How are you, brother? Good, man, good. Out here talking good. about... Balancing caregiving and independence, dude. That's uh, that's a great topic right now because that's what I'm I'm actually doing as right as we speak right right now, dude. <laughs> well, tell us about it, bro, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, chatting about it a bit. Yeah, um, if you Sean want to say, you know, sure. we we've been talking for a bit, uh, but you know, especially as a ventilated quad, you know, I right. you, imagine, uh, you require more care than we do. Yeah, for um, sure. You know, you require care almost, you know, twenty four seven. Uh, at least yeah. someone, you know, around to manage the vent. Um, so yeah, no, what is, no. how do you do it, man? What's your, what's your secret? So, you know, like it's, uh, it's way harder for me. You know, it's like, it's not like I'm a para or a, a functioning quad where I got, you know, where I could be like, uh, you know, be, uh, be like fluky over here and, uh, you know, transfer myself to bed and, uh, feed myself. You know, I, obviously I can you know, I'm paralyzed from the neck down and have no, uh, no arm movement or nothing. So it's like, you know, when I'm, when I'm alone by myself, it's, you know, it's, it's tripped. Dude. It's like, like it's something that shouldn't happen, but it does, you know, it happens here and there, you know, it, 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 yeah. it is what it is. And I just, you know, I just gotta, you know, I gotta be careful about it. And, you know, knock on wood, something's never happened, but if it ever does, you know, it's like, Oh, sh what do I do? Dude? You know? So it's like call 911 or whatever, you know, but, um, you know, as uh, as a quad now, it's like like tonight. Like I don't have a night nurse from 4 p.m. It's probably like almost midnight. You know, actually, I might be able to get one 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 nurse to come in like around 10:30. But from there, it's like, dude, what do I do? You know, I'll be stuck here from 4 p.m. till till 10:30. You know, by myself. You know, thank God I got uh, some roommates that are live that live with me. But then again, I have you know. I still want to go out and do stuff, you know? So it's like, I've taught my friends how to do like just the basic needs, you know, like if I, yeah. like, if I ever needed to get like, uh, like, like if something went wrong with my vent, they know how to use the ambu bag, you know, or if, you know, if my freaking if my leg bag gets too full, they know how to like, you no, know, they could empty it. So I don't get AD, just like the, the, the minor stuff, you know? And yeah, so like tonight cool. I'll call my buddy, I call my buddy and be like, bro, dude, can you, can you give me a hand, you know, and help me out? And like, he'll, he's going to come over and we're going to go out and we're going to go to our friend's house and have dinner and, uh, and stuff like that, you know? So it's like, my thing is, it's like, I'll reach out to my circle of friends, you know, like, the, and they always say like your, your true friends come, come around when, uh, 
when the worst things happen to you, you know? And definitely that's happened for me. You know, my true friends have always been there for me since day one, you know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. you actually really do have a nice core group of friends, man. I see you and your buddies doing all kinds of cool stuff. They're always there riding with you, man. Like, it's awesome, dude. It's great. And I, I, I think Tom's probably the same, you know, like that right. really does help. We have having that real good core group and, and an injury really does show oh, you, man. Sure. Like in the beginning, dude, that first year or two, you see who comes around and yeah. who doesn't and then who keeps coming around and is willing to help you and, you know, yeah. go that little extra bit and... It's cool, man. It really yeah. shows you, like, it's really. It's funny that you say that. It's, you know, it's funny you say that, like, because I, you know, I have, you know, I've been hurt. I'm, you know, like, out of all you guys, I'm like the baby, dude, you know, seven years. But there's been, there's friends that I still used to hang out with that I haven't, that I haven't seen or, you know, I thought were friends, you know. And I've talked to them, you know, they're just like, oh, dude, I just don't know. I don't know how to act around you. And I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? I'm the same guy, dude. I'm just in a wheelchair, yeah. dude. Like, don't let the uh, don't let the wheelchair intimidate you, bro. It's, it's no big deal, you know. Besides, like how you did before. Yeah, yeah exactly. Huh? Exactly. And that... you know, I'm still laughing around, dude. I'm like, I'm totally still goofing around, playing jokes and all that shit, dude. You know. Nice, yeah, man. That's yeah, the thing, you know. Like, I found like um, when I, I've been injured since I was a kid, so you know, I didn't right. really know anybody before, like, you know, I was injured. You know, at least like. They're just like three or four years old, so you know right. they don't run too much. So you know, like pretty much everyone I encounter, you know, it's like they just knew Tom in the chair, right? Right. Um, yeah. And you know, I I used to, especially in school, you know, like middle school and high school, I was very afraid, like you know, to kind of yeah, share a lot of the information. Yeah, yeah. You know, like um, especially like you know, I always had to go to the office in the middle of the day to catheterize, right? right. You know, like, yeah. my friends are always like, why do you got to go to the nurse's office? Because, like, I got some medical stuff to take care of, you know? Like, right. I can't tell, yeah. like, I got to go cath. Like, but I do right. remember, like, that first best friend in high school, like, you know, I told, you know, for whatever reason, like, I just need, like, need to tell somebody, right, the truth about it, right? And yeah. uh, but they were totally cool. And it was, like, yeah. you know, not, like, weird at all, you know? It's but funny, though, because, like, half, half the people you say, you'll be like, Hey, I'll be back. I go calf, and they're like, "The fuck? What do you mean? You got a calf? What's up?" The fuck you know? that? <laughs> they don't yeah. get it, dude. No, yeah, a lot of people don't. With you, dude. Like, like you know, I was an able body till the age of age of thirty seven, dude. I never thought I'd be in be a quad in a wheelchair, you know. And it's like, you know, all the stuff we got to do now. It's like, dude, I never thought of that stuff when I was a walk when I could walk. You know, it's like, dude, don't you like it's just you know you go to the bathroom when you want? You're like, no, this it, it's t- life changes, dude. 480 yeah. degrees dude yeah man and the key i think and like I, i'm pretty sure you have found this is just accepting life man you just have yeah. to accept and be happy like if you dwell on all the things you can't do anymore you're gonna be miserable you know and you and then you your friends are right. gonna get pushed away like you're gonna be addicted to people and people aren't gonna want to be around you as much right. so that's another right. thing too right. is if you keep your own good attitude and keep your head up your friends and family and stuff still want to be around you. And they still want to help you, and they want to be right. a part of your life. They totally. want to be a part of the recovery, totally. and so that's a big part of it too. And I think that's so for you. I know you've always had a great attitude. So, <laughs> what's up, Tom? Yeah. Well, that's people the thing. People right? who accept you, you know, don't mess yeah. with people. You know, if they even have a weird energy about it, you know, and like very often, like yeah, you know, I could tell just from how someone looks at me. And I'm not saying like right? they're looking at me. Totally. You know, or something, but they're just looking at me like I'm different, you know. Like they, right. like are, they can't see, like they can't see Tom. They can see the wheelchair. They can see, you yeah. know, my hands and you know, like my goofy arms and stuff. Yeah. But you know, like they just get stuck there. And you know, it's like nothing against them, but at the end of the day, like if you can't get past, you know, like your little right. petty stuff like that, you know, I'm not gonna spend too much of my time around you. Dude, the best parts like where. You're like you're out in public or something you have a gnarly a gnarly spasm and people are like whoa dude what the fuck's this guy doing what's happening to this guy you're like oh no big deal dude carry on yeah you know? exactly uh, this one time in like seventh grade my best friend he hadn't really seen me have a crazy spasm and i spasm hardcore in the middle of math class one time and the teacher was lecturing he jumped up he was like tom you're moving your legs, you're yeah. moving your legs. <laughs> i'm like bro i'm like bro it's just a spasm don't get too excited that's awesome dude. Yeah, it was great, <laughs> All right. so i got a question for you man um before you hopped on you're just kind of getting ready to segue in the topic of you know um importance of like having a good relationship with your caregiver 
right. whether you know the difficulty of you know how, like maintaining that relationship with a family member or a significant right. other you know if that's the route you go but also you know if you hire someone who's going to be in your space in your house you know bathing you you know undressing you undressing you you know doing really personal care you know the yeah. importance of you know having having a good relationship with that individual you know having a, a friendship yeah. you know a rapport you know being able to talk to them like have right. you had difficulty finding that like is it how important is that for you in that space dude, I, like honestly dude i've been really really blessed lucky whatever you want to call it like I've had my, all, dude. Most of my nurses have been with me. I, you know, I've been hurt seven. I would say most of them. One, my one nurse, my gay nurse, has been with me for like six years, and the other ones have been with me at least like three, three, four. You know, but you know, to your question, it's like how, the relationship you have with them, dude. They're like family to me, dude. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like I'll go some places, and some, some of my brothers are like, damn, dude, that's your nurse, and I'm like, bro. Shut your mouth, dude. It's my nurse. <laughs> you know, it's like a little sister to me, dude. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. like they're like they're like sisters, dude. They're like sisters to me, dude. You know, and it's like, oh my girl, come on, dude. Take it easy. You know, but the relationship is like, like you said, Tom. It's like the be- like, like you said, they're they're bathing you, they're they're feeding you, they're getting you dressed, they're putting you in bed, they're undressing you. You know, all that and like my relationships with them, like I said, it's family, dude. I, I treat every one of them like they're sisters like that I never wanted, you know? That's, that's exactly my experience and situation, too. I was so lucky when I moved out. Like, right. my morning caregiver, this woman named Joyce, she was with me for, like, almost six years, and she was, like, a, you know, another mom to me. Because, like, a second right. mom, honestly. Right. You know, like, I mean, she was here, like, you know, five days a week checking on me, you know, but at the same time, like, um, you know, it's just... Like they're with you, like well, you know, while you're going through your life, you know, while you're growing, while you're changing right. and stuff, and you know, it's yeah, hard sure. not to, you know, like almost kind of create that familial bond with them. Yeah, um, you know? it is. It, it's 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 a bond that you guys get that we get. It's like you know, it's like, dude, I swear to God, like I like we'll get in arguments and it's like, what the hell? Like, are you like literally my sister or what? You know? <laughs> like Jesus, you know, and it's you get pissed and it's like, all right, well. I'm over it, so let's, let's carry on, you know? Well, on, on the flip side of that, I have an agency provide my care two days a week. Um, right. That Five days of, that my regular RHSS caregiver doesn't, you know, they step in for those two mornings because um, I, like, do daily morning care. And uh, that is a different ballpark. Like, I have an incredible home health agency. This one here in SoCal, I know. Right. Uh, you know, shout out to them because they're the best I've ever had you know, consistent nurses, good quality nurses, but with the agencies, right. they sometimes mix it up. Sometimes the oh, nurse yeah. you're used to is not available, and they send a stranger into your house to help yeah. you with your bladder care, your bowel yeah. care, you know, yeah. you're transferring and stuff, putting you in a Hoyer lift, moving you to your yeah. chair, putting your clothes on the way you like, and it can be a trip. It can be Good. so flipping difficult. When it's somebody you, brand dude, new, it's hard. All my, yeah, brand new is hard. Like all my nurses did, they could, like, they could, like, they uh, they asked me every morning, dude, what do you want to wear? But literally, they could pick out anything. Like they they know how I am. It's like, all right, dude. So they know like my style and all that, and they know like I like to match my shit. So it's like, all right, I'm gonna pick this and this. Like my one weekend, there, she'll just pick it out. I'm like, all right, that's cool. I'll wear that, you know. And I don't nice. like, I don't have to tell them, you know. They could like they like, all my nurses know me like. Because they've worked with me so long, they know like all my like my my what what irritates me, what doesn't, how I like this done, how I like that done. You know, it's crazy. Oh, that's yeah. cool, and that's the relationship that like really counts when you build that, and they you have that understanding right. with them. You know, they know, and it's just like you don't even have to say stuff. Sometimes they just you know they're doing it like they yeah, just yeah. like it, it, yeah. It, honestly, dude, it's like it's like the robot. We do the same routine every morning, dude. Every single morning, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I always tell my like a new caregiver that comes in, like honestly, you know, a trained monkey could probably come in and do my care, like if they, yeah. you know, had been, you know, given the right incentives and just like learn to repeat and do the repetitive motion because it's the same thing, you know, every day, right? It's really the right. same thing. Um, it's the same. But, it's yeah, it's the same, 
same thing. But I think it's so important that the individual who's receiving the care is able to communicate their care. You know, they have an understanding yes. of what they require, and then they have the knowledge and the skills to then communicate what needs to be done safely and accurately. Because so Dude. often, I've had LVNs, I've had RNs come in and not have any experience with a Hoyer lift, right. not have any experience, yeah. you know, doing, you know, catheterization or bowel care. Um, and, you know, it's like, if I was, wasn't able to, you know, talk them step by step and communicate, and sometimes they even still mess up and poke my bladder with a catheter because they stick it in too far, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, oh, and, um, like how, like how's your experience been with that? Like how, how you do with that, both you and dude, Sean? Literally, like, I, it's it's. It's funny, dude, because like when you get like a like a cover a cover nurse or or even like a new one, dude, I get like it's like you get a little irritated because it's like I got to explain to them each step by step. When I I, I rather just lay there. Twice as long. Okay, you know you yeah. know what to do, you know. And it's at it's... the point where it's like I can literally just lay in my bed and be like, all right, grab this. It's over. It's on the third drawer down in my bathroom in that in the tall in the tall drawers grab it you know this is there this is over here get this get that you know i could uh, i can literally walk like you said a monkey through each step to get me up you know yeah. do i do i want to no yeah exactly that's the problem is having to walk through every time that's where it's a pain in the ass is when you have to keep I doing get, that i get uh, i get frustrated and it's crazy i uh, i uh i always I always, you know, like when I have a new nurse, like I tell him, like, hey, this is going to be a little slow and it's going to take right. like longer than normal, but give me like a couple days, you know, like yeah. a couple times till I go through this and I promise like it'll be, you know, like butter, like it won't be anything, like you won't have to think too much about it, like we can just talk, do our thing, it'll be in, out, super quick, you know, and like I always tell right. him, like I don't want you here any longer than you have to be. But, you know, at the same time, like, you know, I, like, need, I need my care, you know, like, I, rec I adhere to a certain standard or quality of care. And, you know, if you right. do not that, then I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to, sat like, be satisfied for less. And, you know, right, like, right. I think it's important not to because, you know, it's not difficult to, you know, no, feel safe and like, comfortable during your care. Yeah, you, you could walk anyone through it. But, like, I get so spoiled with the nurses that it's, like, it's so routine to them where like they could lay there and they could do they could do everything they need to do to me and they can get me dressed I, like like I said I could they could pick out uh, any any outfit they know how I am and it's like when I gotta step when I gotta walk the person like through each each and every little step I'm like oh, okay now grab Such this pain. okay now do, do that you know it's like oh my god it's like freaking pulling like yeah Honestly, it's like nails on a chalkboard, bro. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this yeah, is yeah. painful. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I understand that for sure, man. I, I have, honestly, the reason I've become as independent as I have in my life is because of just lack of patience and frustration. And right? I've, and so I had just enough function totally. to where, I, like, screw it, I'm just gonna figure this out myself. Because right. I had just enough function to stubbornly try it for an hour and a half before I figured out how to right. do, do something. So, um, that, and, you know, that can be- with your- uh, What's up? You know, with your, uh, with your function, uh, Sean, it's like, you know, you, your hand function isn't the best, dude, but you figured a way out that you that let, let you uh, that you can do it yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly. It just ta and, it takes... You know, it, uh, go for it. You, no. Sometimes you got to create freedom for yourself, right? I mean, yeah, even totally. you, Russ, I'm sure, dude. Like, yeah. everybody needs space where it's just, like, Russ time or it's just Tom time or it's just Sean time, you know? And like, I think it is right. so flippant important to be able to create that yeah. space for you when you need it. No, uh, totally. And it's like, uh, the, the, the funny ones are like, it's like when you get like a new nurse that comes in, they're like attached to your hip and you're like, dude, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to cut you off of me and you go somewhere else and I'm going to go over here because I need my time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude. Uh, it's funny because like I have a, like this, I have an amazing like morning caregiver, this guy John, right. uh, who's been with me for going on two years now. But sometimes okay. like I'll go out 
you know, like um, stay, like kick it with some friends, and I'll stay over there, and I'll skip my right. morning care. I just stayed at my buddy's that night, and like I, I'm okay oh, skipping my care for the morning. Yeah, I'll stay the night. I'll skip my care in the morning. You know, like I just want to like have a morning to myself. I'll come back, you know, do my thing. Like right. it's usually just like a down Saturday or whatever. So I'm just at home kicking it. But like the first time I did that, like I called him like earlier in the day and said, "Hey, John, I don't need you in the morning." And he's like, "What do you mean you don't need me in the morning?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm just staying out of friends." He's like, "What about your care?" I'm like, "Oh, I'll just skip it. Like we'll just, you know." That's do awesome. Saturday. And he's like, are you sure? And he, like, stayed on the phone with me for 10 minutes trying to Dude, convince me. And I just was freaking sure. Like, hey, man, like, I'm good. Like, you know, I'm adjusting my diet. Right. Fine. I think I'll be okay. But this Dude. freedom, like, I require for my sanity, right. you know? Dude, some of these nurses freak out. They're like, are you sure you're going to do that? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, I do it all the time. Like, what? Are you, are you sure? I'm like, Dude step back let me do my thing you know like, <laughs> yeah like, just let me do it you know uh, but that's well, kind crazy. of part of the familial relationship though i think you know you develop a lot of the caregivers or, you know at least that's kind of the instincts that they Dude, when, like, that when i took my when i went snow skiing with oh crap we freeze I'm, you're gonna do this i'm like hell yeah i'm gonna do this dude. Like, i'm gonna do this because i want to have some fun you know and, and yeah. she was freaking out because I totally, dude. I forgot my, uh, I forgot my backup battery to my vent, so my vent kept beeping the whole time I was on the mountain, dude. And she's like, "Oh my god, I'm like, don't worry, I'm okay." <laughs> that is a little scary, man. That might scare me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> just because it's the vent, man. That's important. I'm telling you. All you hear is beep, beep, beep. I'm like, yeah, I'm cool, dude. Don't worry about it. But you're the one that knows yourself and your stuff. Like, have that freedom, and you're just like. Fuck it, like you know, I'm good. Like you know, I'll be fine. Yeah. Like what happens? Happen. Yeah. Like that is the stuff that keeps you going. Like that's the stuff that knows that you still have. Like it's, you know, you still have well, that freedom. Like, yeah. dude, like uh, like last weekend, I was I didn't have a nurse, so I didn't have a, my nurse was um, she was graduating uh, RN school, so she had the weekend off, you know. So I called my friend called, and she's like, I could uh, I could come and hang out with you, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool coming out, you know. So we, she comes over. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's get in the van, dude. Let's, let's go out. She's like, what? You want me to drive you around? You're like, she's like, you trust me? I'm like, dude, bro, I, you, I can't like, I can't sit there and be like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay home because I don't trust the way you drive. I'm like, dude, you know what? Just be careful, dude. That's all it is. Have common nice. sense when you're driving. You know, exactly. I, I'm gonna tell you this. Go slow. Go slow over bumps. Go slow around turns. And we'll be fine, you know. Exactly. Yeah, as long as we're back to the ferries up in here, we're chilling, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I've, dri- I've driven Tom around in the back of my van a few times, throwing him around a bit. <laughs> Tom's like, "Well, dude, relax. Come on, slow, slow down." <laughs> it's so funny though because when we like cram into Sean's car it's usually yeah. his manual chair with the you know like power assist wheels the rugby right. chair and then my chair with his two front seats that like yeah. don't come out so we're usually packed in like sardines so there's not too much room for me to slip and slide do around you stay but it's, in uh, do you stay in your chair Tom or do you transfer out uh, no I stay in my chair okay yeah yeah I just sit in that like awesome. little bit of seat area so when you stay at your yeah. buddy's house you sleep in a chair or you transfer out? Oh, I've done it both. Um, really? I've done both where, yeah, like, I've uh, slept in my chair, just crashed, honestly, like, a couple of times. I mean, this is back in the college days, you know? Had too many drinks, you know, right. just didn't feel comfortable going home or whatever. Right. So, you know, I just, like, grabbed a pillow, reclined my chair back up against the wall, you know, like, wrapped my head in a blanket, you know, crashed for a couple hours That's until I could catch awesome, a bus this bro. morning or something. Like um, you know, uh, I've, like I've had my friend like uh, two buddies like pick me up transfer me to you know like a love seat too and you know they just help me right. out in the morning um, you know like I've also stayed at you know friends or you know like gone over um, you know and transferred like onto someone's bed too you know assuming okay. like I can transfer back um, but that's, that's always good. kind of like a trick you know um, like going staying somewhere you know hotels whatever it may be um, right. figuring that out that's something that's that I'm kind of trying to tackle right now um which yeah, sean simple, bro talk. i do it all the time not all the time but i do it like i do it at least once or twice a year like a 
when I go to Vegas, I'll go out to Vegas with with a, not not my LDN nurse, but like a caretaker. And yeah. I you know I I find I find the the hotels that have ceiling lifts in them, they can easy easy peasy good. Like right. Treasure Island out in Vegas, like <clears throat> Treasure Island, they have uh, literally I think two rooms with uh, with ceiling lifts and the beds that recline. So that's oh really? Of, like MGM. Set myself yeah. up for success over here, cause like I'm traveling, you know, traveling with a caregiver, without a caregiver, you know, like right. having a caregiver to like meet me there, you know, shit like that, you know, like getting a hotel space that's comfortable for me, right? Uh, no, cause like that's kind of like next big thing on my horizon is doing some traveling yeah, and like dude, troubleshooting like, the caregiving aspect is kind of like the been the hardest part for me. Yeah, once you do it, you be like. Why take me so long to do this? Seriously, yeah. dude. No, for sure, man. So I did do like a little weekend trip to um, San Diego this last year with my friends. Cool. Where I just said, "Screw the caregiver, I'm just gonna go for it." You know, risk the biscuit, like you know, try to walk yeah. you know, on my own, and it went well. Like you're saying, um, you know, like, uh, but the longer trips and stuff. I mean, Sean. So I know, I know what you do, but talk to us about what you do when you travel for your care situation. Because I think we touched on it last week, but still, it's like worth noting again because that was a big, big thing. So yeah, when I travel, um, it's, now I like to go if I can. I'll try to bring somebody, like my brother or something. But for yeah. years, I would just uh, for rugby, I'd go like a week or two in advance. I'd go onto Craigslist for the city where I was going post an ad that I needed a caregiver no for the certain day. Yes. So, and I would pretty much just get the caregiver for my bowel care. So I would have them like, say I was going to do it Friday afternoon after the games. I would say, you know, meet me. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd give them my information. I wouldn't give them the room number usually until day of. I'll give them the hotel and stuff. Tell them like, you know, 4 p.m. I'll hire you for five hours, pay you 10, 12 bucks an hour cash and just, I just find some random off of Craigslist. <laughs> no way, dude. Slug would just be like, run it, dude. I don't care. Go for it. <laughs> and then the rest of the weekend, I would rely on other higher functioning quads to help me with my shoes right. or uh, the coach that's around, you know, so or other family members or friends, like if I needed a little extra something. But yeah, man, well, I just dude, would kind of rough it. Like, <laughs> dude, this is like off subject, but dude, like, how how often do you do your bow? You you do it on the weekends too or no? So I go every other now, but for a lot of years, and especially when I was traveling, I did Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So and I did okay. that. That's what the rugby guys taught me. They're like, oh yeah, you can just skip two yeah. days for the weekends, no problem. I'm like I'm like okay, cool. Dude, so and I you know that's what I do. I do I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I skip the whole weekend and I start right. back up on Monday. And it gives you a little more freedom. It gives you the two days free, you right. know, so you don't have to have that. Um, right. And so, like, that's what I would do. You know, I really, I usually have to have, like, one time where I do have to do my bowel care and stuff during the weekend. So it would usually yeah. be, like, that Friday. Um, and um, and I never really, so that was the other thing, is especially if I was flying, I do not like to do my bowel care before a flight. Really? Because, no. Because for me, like, I, I have the same thing Bobby Rohan talked about last time. Like, once everything stops... Like, I'm pretty locked up. Like, it's not coming out, like, unless something really drastic happens. But once right. I start going for that day, like, there's the possibility that there was something just not quite settled, didn't quite finish. Right. And that plane, the awkward transfer, the weird seating positions, like, I actually have had a small accident on a plane. Embarrassing to say, but, yeah, it happened. It sucked. Dude, uh, hey, shit happens, bro. <laughs> you know? Shit happens, man. <laughs> So luckily it wasn't yeah, a bad, bad one. All the but... times that, uh, all the times I've traveled, I've, uh, I've always left like on a Friday, like a Friday mid morning, you know, like around noon or something. And I always do my, uh, I always do, I always do my bowel program Friday morning. Never, right before. Never, never had problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I think most of the time I'm okay, but I'm just so afraid of that. That fear is just, especially after it happened to me once, it's just like. And that was a weekend I was traveling by myself. Oh, for sure. So that was rough, dude. I got to, I had to, I got to the hotel. I didn't wasn't going to have a caregiver till the next day to do my bowel care and stuff. So I basically attempted 
my best at trying to clean myself up and I changing my shorts and cha- trying to clean. But there was guaranteed I was sitting in some crusty grossness for the whole 24 hour. <laughs> like, you know, like hey, it was gross. Whatever, it's bad, dude, but that's, that's, the, the, that's a crip life, dude. That's right. Yeah, dude. Hey, that's so a... I think that's something that you said though, Sean, which is like important is one bad experience can fuck you up pardon oh, my French sure. but it's really true you know and like sure. it does exactly that especially yeah. with a caregiver a bad caregiver someone that makes you feel unsafe someone that oh, maybe yeah. hurt and stuff you know like doing your care you know not inadequately so that's when you like it's so important if that does happen to you try not to let that fear take hold because not all caregivers are like that it's right. not worth you know like going without your care for you know right. fear of like having a bad one um and you know that's where like speaking up and advocating for yourself and being able to like explain your care and you know like if it looks even shady or feels even a little bit shady be like stop let's slow down let's fix this and you know let's go from there um because one bad experience can it's always know, funny too because uh, like I've been like to like one of my nurse like to a nurse or something. I'll be like, you know what? Hey, check my check my uh, catheter because I think it's it's pinched, you know, or or whatever. Check this or check that, and they'll be like, damn, dude, how'd you know that, dude? I'm like, dude, I know my body, and this, I know how my body reacts if something's like pinched off or whatever, you know, if something mm-hmm. something's not going right. It's like you know, you know, you know your body, and you know what what happens when something's not going right, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely, man. And that's what's hardest too. Those first couple of years, you, it kind of takes like a year or so to like to figure those things out to learn your body. You know, dude, like a year, more like two to three. Man. Yeah, I try like, dude, realistically, like it does take a few. Like, yeah, a, a year, a year. You think like a year? You think you know, and then you're like, nope. <laughs> I say oh, this all the time. I've made my life a hundred times easier. I'm 23 years post, and I'm still learning stuff about my body. Right. You know, dude, it's a trip, man. And, you know, it changes, too. Like, you know, like, you learn how it communicates. You know, you just, like, certain things, number of things happen a certain number of times, and you just learn. Like, you learn that new normal. You know, you learn your body's new normal. Uh, Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I was just kind of looking through the... uh, Were there any other topics that we didn't touch on? I was just thinking that, um, and I was also just looking through the chat for questions. But the one other thing that I was going to mention, sorry, uh, was the difference between hiring private and then like having like IHSS and like having to use both. Like you have the extra two day thing, which that's not private. But like, Russell, do you have to hire private caregivers outside of IHSS hours or do you have enough covered? Well, that was just one of the things I was going to ask. Like like between my, my, um, between my, um, my LVN hours and my uh my ihss hours i make it work okay cool that's what i was just wondering to kind of see like especially i i gotta flip yeah you know you gotta you gotta use both but you know it works out for me you know right right like you you would think they'd be like hey this guy that can't move from the neck down and he's on a ventilator he should uh he should have 24-hour nursing but yeah no it doesn't work like that yeah i know that is crazy man it's like and that's like a total other subject we could talk about, you know. Yeah, for sure. The, yeah, the 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 lacking things in some of the things with our system. And um, right. I'm just gonna like quick click through some of these. I was just looking through some of the comments. I've been posting some in the chat, uh, a lot of just comments. But I just want to make sure if, if there was any questions. It's hard for me to read them all as we're going, so just kind of flipping back through. If anybody. Um, had some questions somebody morgan was talking about a program for adults like over 55 or something for like that's kind of like an ihss also that's like a supplementive i don't yeah, know yeah there's uh there's totally other programs out there you know you just gotta yeah find I, just, I just is california but like me and tom said in the beginning if you just look up your state you probably have the same right. type of local care help right. um so, and honestly, just, your insurance, care. you know, whether it be Medi-Cal, Medicaid, Medicare, whatever it is, private insurance, whatever, they will try to, like, get you to use all the state benefits you can. So they'll also no, point you sure. in the direction of, you know, like, whatever your NHSS is, if you're not, you know, local to California or, you know, even, like, the United States. 
Um, you know, I'm sure. Um, I mean, most first world countries at least got caregiving programs uh, to provide for individuals. It's just a matter of looking around. Yeah, totally. And it's crazy. Like, like if I was to get my drink out tomorrow, do you know how much my nursing hours, my LVN nursing hours would drop? It's not. They would like, dude, like they bear, they barely give me enough as it is, you know. And then if I was to take my drink out tomorrow, dude, I would probably, dude, it would probably drop three quarters. You know? Really? It's lame. Yeah, Holy, it's gnarly, that's... dude. It's so crazy. Crazy. Yeah, that's that is crazy, what man. That sucks, dude. I can't believe that. Well, Especially... that was what I ran into initially when I first moved out. Is like I wanted too much independence, and they were like, "If you are this independent, then we're not gonna give you well, like right? you know the adequate yeah. stuff you need." So I was like, "All right, I guess I'm more like disabled than that, dude." And I require play. more care, bro. You gotta play your cards. Like you yeah, gotta play no, your cards, definitely. right, dude? And it's sad. It's sad to say that, but that's what we have to do. Yeah, I call it the crib card. And you know, yeah, that's like totally. maybe not the most PC language, but sometimes you gotta play the crib card and yeah. you know, be like, hey, this is like, I am chronically disabled and paralyzed from the chest down. Like, right? you know, I'm not taking this hand stuff. Like, dude, we're totally. Here. It's like, like, dude, if I get my trach out, it's like they, they think all of a sudden I could feed myself. Like, I still yeah, need like what? To feed me. Jesus yeah, dude. Gravity, dude. It's like I st- my arms still don't. <laughs> right? Uh, um, ben just said something in the comments, and uh, he's absolutely right. Uh, check out your adult rehabilitation services. And if you are newly injured and you are experiencing like any form of disability, um, you should have been in, put in touch with the hospital, with your adult rehab services. You know, they're the ones that help rehabilitate you, you know, back to getting to you know, right. home. But you know, it's different everywhere. So some you you are your best advocates. Never forget that. That's the one thing you gotta always remember for sure, yeah. They're not just gonna give you the hours and the money and like the care you need. Like it sucks, right. but you have to fight for it. You have to work for it. And uh, totally dude, it's like you gotta fight freaking uh, tooth and nail just to get the bare minimum, dude. Yeah. And this is coming from you Russ who's like and like so like I made the mistake and I think Tom did the same thing early on acting like like when the first IHSS people came out to evaluate like acting like you're you're like you're trying to like impress them like I try you know, trying to like right. show them yeah. all these things oh I can do I, oh yeah I can do that yeah. totally do that but then you realize like oh they're just taking away your hours that you actually need by Dude, you trying like, to all right, goes, like, uh, like oh don't do that 10 hours there goes 10 more hours up <laughs> another five hours doc you're like like shut up Sean tell him you can't do it yeah dude it's like and that's the thing that they don't think about or factor in is like yeah just because I worked my ass off to figure out a way to do something right it takes me an hour to do it when it could take a caregiver two minutes like right, so right. I, I choose the caregiver right uh, but you know but it's just one of those things but yeah that's the thing a mistake I made but it's just like with you man I feel like dude like like you have your like I don't know man I, the fact that they would take so many hours for like no trade and... the hardest part is about like being on the on the vent is like everyone's scared of it dude they're so scared of it and then after like 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 three four months I'm, they're like oh no big deal and I'm like see I'm like dude it's not that big a deal you like you guys you guys hype yourself up over it and every every noise my vent makes you guys freak out I'm like dude <laughs> as long as that beep stops you're fine if it doesn't stop we have a problem you know? yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, it's funny I had a trach initially when I was first injured I was you know I think they had to be on a van for like three months like following my injury oh um, right. uh, and then they you know realized I you know, had enough um, you know function to respirate on my own so I was off of it right. and you know like um, I didn't know too many ventilated quads until I moved to LA um, shit like I still don't know that now. many I don't like I probably only know a handful, bro. Me too. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I, I only know a handful too. So I work for Noah Nunn, so I only know a handful. But still, like, you know, I remember that because, you know, I'm like the lion team. And I so, said, like, the first time I came through the ventilated quad, like, I was a little, like, I was a little hesitant around his head. Right. Just because it, it, you know, it's a little intimidating. And it was. And it wasn't like that I was scared of it. It was just like, oh, um, you know, every time I heard that beep or, you know, like, I heard somebody noise, I'm like, oh, right? shit, he's got to be breathing, yeah. you know? 
I, it's, I don't know if it's messed up with me, but dude, I love messing with like the new nurses, dude. I just freak <laughs> them out, dude. Like they'll be like, they'll be like, get me in bed, or I'll be in my chair, uh, and I'll make my vent go off or something, dude. And they'll be like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> Well, no, laughing, that's, that's so funny because uh, like, I have a good buddy who's a ventilator quad, and you know, he would always just like try to mess with me, <laughs> and you know, like try to screw around. Oh, no, dude, it's fun, dude. Yeah, um, but, but, but once you learn the buttons, once you learn what the noises mean, or you learn how to shut the beeping off at the very least, yeah. you know, like it's like ah, you know, forget it. Like he's fine. Like I'm not worried about that shit. I'll tell you a funny story. It's like, like when I first came home. You know, I didn't have nurse. I didn't get nursing for like three months when I got home, you know? So my family was taking care of me, you know? And I swear to God, dude, every time, any one little beep out of my vent, dude, my family was running in my room, dude. <laughs> and they got to the point where it was like, you know what? Let's just buy an extra bed and put it, we'll put it in your room so we can sleep in there. <laughs> okay, whatever, dad. And then after, after a while, it would, the vent would go off, beep, beep, and then it would stop, and they'd be like, I'd like be waiting for them to come, and then they wouldn't even come, and I'd be like, "Dude, did you my vent?" They're like, "Yeah, but it went off." Like, you good? <laughs> That's it. The family gets used to it, man. They're just like, "Ah, your house is cool. Don't yeah, worry about dude, it." Totally. <laughs> Yeah, totally, bro. It's funny. Well, it's so funny because that's how I was when I first went home. Like, I was this fragile little thing that was like, you know, you just like walking on eggshells around me, moving right. me and stuff. But like within six months, like my brother was like jumping on top of me, you know, beat me up. And stuff. Right. And, you know, that brotherly love. Like it was, you know, it's like all passed around. Like everything's out the door. Like he's normal. He can take it. You know, like my mom was showing my care to new caregivers, training them. You know, she'd just be like tossing my legs around, doing right. everything. It wasn't <laughs> rough or anything. But he was like, yeah, yeah, just toss them around. Like, you know, it's all right. And dude, like, they, like they, the, care, the caregiver walking was like freaking out, going, oh my God, what are you doing to him? You're like, dude, I'm not this fragile little piece of glass. You know? Exactly. Like, dude. Yo, I got shit to do. Let's go. I want to get about my morning. Like, you know, I want to do this quick. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, dude, get me up. I want, I want to get in my yep. chair and I want to freaking do my thing. Yep. Quick, quick awesome. with that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we had one more question uh, about Volk Rehab stuff. Um, just uh, whether they, if it's all covered or like, I, dude, I don't really know exactly what never, the. Half a rehab yeah. never covered if it's out. You know, once you're out, dude. Yeah. You know? My only familiarity with uh, vocational rehab here in California is the Department of Rehabilitation. You know, they assist right. and, like, and you know, getting back to work and stuff. And they're a strong California, so they started helping me when I first like graduated high school and going to a JC. They paid for all of my tuition and books and everything in regard to my disability and like me like achieving my educational goals. Now that can mean um, paying for a caregiver while you're at school. If your um, if your insurance you know won't pay for your caregiver while you're out and about because that breaks their code or their protocol or whatever, then you need to hire someone to be with you like your aide while you're at school. The Department of Rehab will help you out in that regard, but it's only in attaining your you know vocational goals, and that means you know someone at school they won't pay for your at-home care and stuff. You know, as important as that is, but they will help you with transportation or anything in that regard to your education. Yeah, it's just really important to look up your state, um, your local state programs like that because every state has different programs, different things, and you just have to look and try to find those things because it's the only thing, right. you know, like it's the only way you're going to get to them. They're not just going to just show up at your doorstep and so you just have you to know, look it all depends what like it all depends on what kind of rehab you're looking for too you know you're looking you know even like you know when i first came out i never knew about like the brown center at northridge you know at csun uh -huh. until someone uh, someone told me oh dude you should be going there do rehab there i'm like what what the hell's yeah. that you know yeah i wish like i would actually done gym. that well you can work out <laughs> Yeah, yeah, when I was in the valley, yeah. I, I don't know why I didn't take advantage of trying to go over there. It was my but my fault. The hard part is, is that like that uh, that shit gets expensive, dude. It's not like it's not like they give it to us for free, dude. You know, right, like yeah. the physical rehab, 
like uh, the physical rehab is we got to pay mostly out of pocket, dude. You know. Well, see, the crazy thing is, is the physical rehab is what keeps us out of the hospital. It, so it keeps us healthy, right. it keeps our body functioning normally, or you know, as normally as it can, given our circumstances. They won't pay for any of that. Yeah, you know, they like you know are willing to accept like tens of thousands right. of dollars for hospital fees. And, yeah, you know, like, right. possibly <laughs> more, you know, when you end up, like, having to, you know, need physical rehab from a hospital, yeah, and, sure. you know, like, whatever it is. It's just nuts. It's all backwards. Yeah, um, so, yeah, I think um, that's pretty much it for as far as any questions, unless uh, I missed any and stuff. But and I don't know if there's any other stuff. Yeah, you independent. Any other anecdotes you want to add, Russ? <laughs> oh, dude, like I said, it's like, you know, it's it's who you, uh, you know, when, when it comes to being, you know, having a disability and relying on nursing and all that, you know, just because you have nursing, you know, you still, I would say, still surround yourself with a good, a good circle of people that'll still uh, help you at time of need, you know, it's like, like exactly. I said, like today, dude, like my four, my four o'clock nurse left, dude, I'm just waiting for, waiting for my buddy to get here, dude, you know, and it's like, you know, you got to, Keep keep your uh, you know keep your good friends around and your true friends around you know because they're they're always gonna be there for you uh, when you need them. Sweet man. Sure. So yeah, you're just hanging out then right now. Your caregiver just took off and. Yeah, my my roommates are here. So. Oh I, nice. I don't you know it's, uh, I'm like whatever, no big deal, you know. Yeah, that's you cool, know. man, dude. Yeah, that's awesome, Russ. Dude. <laughs> you know, uh, it's like it's quite it, you know at first it was always like. It was always scary for me because I'm like, dude, what if, oh, what yeah. if something happened, dude? Like, what if I get, like, what if a tube pops off? What if I get a plug or, a, you know, and a mucus plug and I and I can't breathe or something, dude? I'm going to be screwed. But, you know what, for the most part, like, I, like when I, if I know I'm not going to have a nurse for, like, an hour or so after, like, my, my day nurse leaves, I'll have them, suck, like, suction me and do all my, you know, some, some precautionary stuff, you know? Nice. Smart, preventative, yeah, precautionary. That's cool, yeah. man. Those are good tips for, for people. Sure. I hope people are able to learn something from uh, everything here and got something out of this little discussion. And, you got, know, that's the big thing. Say, yeah. Set yourself up for success. You know, however yes. that oh, be, for sure. you know, whatever that means. Um, you know, through caregivers, family members, friends, you know, have backup, have yourself covered. But set yourself up to be successful. You know, that all, all comes right. down to the individual, um, you know, at the end of the day. Because nobody's going to do it for you. You know, as much yeah. as, like, it's people care, you know, you know, it might be around yeah. you. You know, like, you got to... You know, make sure you have your stuff handled. Um, oh, for sure. And and it's like I always say, it's like you always got to stay positive, dude. Yeah. You know, stay positive even through the uh, even through the hard times. Because if not, you're just gonna you're just gonna bring yourself down, and you're gonna you know you're gonna you're gonna be that little freaking that lump on the log, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Russ, yeah. you've always had an uh, awesome attitude, man. From the first time I met you, <laughs> early on, dude, you just yeah, dude, I've, I've always little, respected I, like that. I always like over on time. But that's yeah, kind we're of like going another on. topic. If you don't mind me, like touching on is like when you're wow. in a mood, you know, like talking to a caregiver, you know, treating a caregiver. I mean, I've had a couple times where I mean, like I've always like learned from my parents, you know, like give the respect you want to get back, you know, like exactly. and, you know sure. that's like for everybody in my life, you know, caregivers especially. Oh, like sure. I always, you know. Even if I wake up in a mood on the wrong side of the bed, you know, like you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. You know, let's yeah, have to. Like, I, I always say this, Tom, it's like don't let the five minute a five minutes of a bad day ruin your whole day, you know. And that's like, that's like what know? I was that's just gonna get saying. to. Like it's so easy, like if you have a rough morning with a caregiver, you know, like your your bowel care doesn't go, you know, as right. you know, good as you want it and you got plans later, you know, whatever it is or you know, like just whatever it is. Like sometimes I've had a caregiver come in with a really funky energy in a super bad mood and yeah. kind of like affect me. And like I afterwards I was like kind of yeah. left like, Ugh. you know, like feeling weird. But, you know, you got that's when you got to tell yourself, like, I'm not going to let this last hour, you know, like yeah. set the precedent for the rest of my day. You know, sure, I'm going to let go of that negative stuff. Um, I mean, you know, it's like, like, it's... Embrace myself to the good, and, you know, just move forward. Right. It's like the day you freaking do your your bowel program you get up and then it's like you shit your pants and you're like oh my god but don't let that ruin your whole day dude just freaking change your shit and carry on you know <laughs> clean up the uh, shit and go <laughs> yeah dude get together yeah. and move on with yeah. your day literally <laughs> right uh, 
Oh, that's awesome, man. That's the best thing you can do and we can do. And, and that helps on this subject with the caregiving because, like we were saying before, when you have a bad attitude towards your care, they have a bad attitude towards yeah. you, and it's a toxic relationship. If you, like, it you know, like, it just takes you treating them well, then it just is hard for them not to treat you well. And then, bam, you guys have a nice, you know, uh, a better working well, the relationship. Funny, you and, know, the, uh, the crazy part is, is, like, you'll get a, uh, like, I've, I've had new nursing come in. And like I'll have them for the day, and then I'll call my agency and be like, "Nope, don't send them back." You know, this this ain't gonna work. You know. Yeah. So sometimes that's so the situation. It's like you you know, you know what what will work for you and and what won't. You know. So it's like you got you got to voice your opinion about it. Like I've done the exact just sit same there and thing. Take it. Times. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, man. Hey, Russ, real quick. Um, somebody to ask just. If you care to share, you can, uh, just how you had your injury or what your, uh... Oh, I, for sure. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I was, uh, I dove off the back of a boat in Lake, uh, Lake Havasu, and I forgot we were in, uh, shallow water. I hit the bottom of the, uh, the river and broke my neck. Yep, a diving accident, man. Diving no too many, man. I'm like, dude, so it was scary. like, it's like not even, like, I wasn't even rock diving, dude. I was like, I was, we're out, we're up on the shore playing, like, horseshoes i'm like bro it's hot dude i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna jump in and you know my friend uh my buddy's got a pontoon but you know those things hit they yeah. sit like you know two three feet out of the water as it is so i i uh i jumped up there and then walked to the back and i dove in as soon as i dove in man i felt the freaking i felt my face hit it and my neck went back and dude that shit is the lot like i've never heard anything so loud underwater in my life really? i totally heard my neck break and then, um, like, my whole body went numb, and I was, like, I was face down in the water going, oh, fuck, what am I going to do? You know, I was stuck face down. Literally, it felt like forever. It was probably, I, I would say it was almost probably, like, a minute to a minute and a half because I was, I was literally getting to the point where I was running out of air. I was, like, despair, and I'm, like, dude, if I, uh, if I suck in water, dude, I'm going to drown. You know, I'm gonna if I suck water and I'm gonna sink and, and I'll drown it and no one will find me. So luckily at the time my girlfriend finally she grabbed me by my shorts and she's like, Quit effing around I'm like, dude, I mess I mess around, man. I can't I can't move. So that's when, you know, they pulled me up on shore and put me on my back and left me in the water and they called for help and then uh, they uh, they took me to like um, to like Needles Hospital and then they're like, dude, we can't do nothing here. He needs to go. He needs, he needs to go to like a trauma floor hospital. So they flew me out to, um, they flew me out to Vegas to, uh, to UMC. And then, you know, as I was flying out there, I freaking, I, was, I think I flatlined like twice on the helicopter ride out to, uh, to Vegas. And then I like flatlined once, like in the ICU. And then uh, I spent like five, I think it was five or six weeks sedated in the hospital before I went to Colorado for rehab. Wow, man. Yeah, I, I, I knew your story kind of, but I didn't know all the, those details, or I didn't remember yeah. all those details. Uh, man, yeah, that's crazy, crazy flatline. You know, like, wow. You know, it could be it could be worse, dude. It no. could be totally worse, and you know what? I think I think the, the man above for keeping me keep me around for my kids, you know? Exactly, man. We got to be grateful, yeah, thankful for what we got. You got your family still, right. you know? You're, li- you're sure alive, you living. Right, Russ? <laughs> Got that beautiful frame, because you know, beautiful muscles that function. The ones that don't, you know, they're beautiful too. You know, they're just a little lazier, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a what's on top that, that still works that keeps us going. You know. Yeah, big time. Sweet man. Big time, man. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that, Russ, with everybody and us. And uh, yeah, for sure. Thanks well, for having me, guys. That's right. For sure. Yeah, we'll All wrap right, up the live stream. Late, dude. Oh, dude, don't worry about it, man. We got it's cool. We ended up going. I think you were still on for about a full hour because we went. Oh, we, we had a pretty long nice. show this time, but that's cool. I mean, it, it's the conversation was going, and I think it was helpful for a lot of people, especially newer injuries. If you're looking for, you know, you're yeah, trying I mean, to figure this out. If so anyone, yeah, if they, uh, if anyone of them have questions, put my Instagram on the feed that's or whatever. A, they can I hit was me just up gonna say, that. I'll put them know, in the like description. The detailed information anybody like you know anyone of us please feel free to reach out directly you know like i can send yeah. you any resources that you will probably be like okay right. stop said stuff. but like you know if you uh if you are lost you know in the dark and you need some help finding you know what you need to yeah, like, we're sure. here and happy to help uh you, you know you, point you, you can right even direct. uh 
Luke, you can even put my cell number on there if you want. I don't care. I'll just put your Insta, man. I don't want to have people That's trying fine. to. You, you don't want too many, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, I don't want to get any weirdos hitting you up. <laughs> right. I'll give it a dig, but if, you know, it's like, I always say if I could just help one person, that's uh, that's awesome, you know. Yeah, exactly, man. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate Brandon, you watching, thanks, man. man. But yeah, I appreciate everybody watching, and, uh, you guys. Tune everybody, back. thank you. Thank you. We will be back next Tuesday at 3.30 again. Different topic, I'm yeah. not sure yet. And um, yeah, it was great seeing everybody. I'm going to end the thank stream now. Uh, don't don't to hang up comment, quite, subscribe. quite that yet. that notification button. <laughs> oh yeah, live to roll, everybody. That's right. <laughs>